All right, we're on live. Uh, Let's Go Vikes is back. I'm here with Alex Kaufman. I'm Eugene McCormick. Uh, I think most of the Vikings fans out there know who I am. So, Alex, why don't you introduce yourself? Well, I am a sophomore at Denison University down in Granville, Ohio, and I've been attending Cleveland State games since I was in a stroller, actually. So I've been going for years and years. I'm a big fan. Um, I've already done a lot of research on the team and didn't have to do too much more when um, when I was approached um, to do this to do this webcast. Um, and just a note to the guests, we were going to have Paul Paul Oren on today from uh, NWI, but uh, he kind of ran into an interview that he wasn't expecting to at 6 o'clock, and we could have had him at 6.15, but this is going to be a lengthy, lengthy preview anyway, so uh, we're going to push him back until next week, and uh, we'll be good to go then. So we're going to start with the 2013 2014 recap. Um, what did you see last year? Who stood out? Who were you disappointed in last year, Alex? Um, so for me, I really, I was frustrated a lot of the year. Yes, the yes the Vikings won 20 games. Yes, they yes they like were a good team, but everything that I saw just frustrated me. It felt like it felt like this team just like it wasn't a traditional Vikings team and. It just didn't. It something just didn't seem right about the team. I don't know. I like. I can't explain it. I think it was just like the zone defense that he was running. The fact that it was that they that it seemed like Charlie Lee and Trey Lewis would chuck up twenty shots a game. It was kind of a mess at times. Um, and I think we're you know one of the notes that we put on here was who underwhelmed and I mean I hate to say it but. Anton Grady kind of did, but I wouldn't actually say it was his fault because he had no help under center, and I think that might plug us again this year. I mean, there's a lot of question marks heading into this year. Would you agree with that? Oh, totally. I mean, they yes, they returned four starters, but who else do they return? There's nobody else on the Vikings that's coming back. Everybody else is new. Well, I do have a strong feeling what Andre Yates is going to, what what he's going to bring. Um, now, if he's going to, you know, he's not going to be Brent Forbes, but he will be a productive player in that lineup. Um, but, you know, you got Zalo, you got Keen. Those guys didn't really put up the numbers that, you know, were eye-popping. We're going to need somebody to step up. I mean, that, I guess, is the long and short of it. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, but the thing is, you always can use a guy like a Brayon Watson type, a guy who scores a couple points a game, but who can do the little things right, who gets the spacing right, who can hit a couple shots, who can play good defense, and who can be a leader by example, need the ball in his hands the whole time. That's that's a good thing because you look with Charlie Lee, with Trey Lewis, with Anton Grady, those guys are going to get their touches. Those guys are going to want to score. That's just how That's just how they are. That's their M.O. So having a guy who doesn't necessarily need to score but can still make a difference, that's important as well. And, you know, looking at, you know, who's departed, Sebastian Douglas, he was like the Braylon Watson type of guy, maybe yeah. a little bit better than Watson. And the big one is going to be John Harris. I mean, that that's brutal. That's a brutal loss. Oh, yeah, the lefty, I mean, he could shoot, he was... He was tall. He was another. He was another big guy on defense, which made it a lot easier on on Anton Grady. And then you look. I mean, but now he's gone, and so there's going to be somebody's going to have to step up, whether it be Aaron Scales, whether it be I don't. I don't even know. I, I can't tell you who's going to step up because I just I don't know. I haven't seen enough of these new guys. Yeah, and you know we're pegged to be number two, according to the media, but. It's such an unknown because we don't really know what we're going to get out of Zalo. We don't know what we're going to get out of Flanagan. Um, oh, Scales, so you know, I've seen him play as a freshman. And, you know, he was right like sure. Renard, he, he kind of reminds me of a bad version of Renard Fields. And, you know, Renard Fields was the eighth or ninth man in the NCAA tournament run, you know. Yeah. He's not a starting center. No, he's not, and he shouldn't get any minutes. It's honestly, there's – there's a reason he was redshirted last year, and I.D. is Meladata played, and Devin Long played, and Ludin Adai played in a few games when he was healthy. 
those guys and those guys are gone. At least they, at least some of them, like in a game or two, could have been serviceable at times. I don't, th- I don't think Scales can be. I you agree know, with like, you. Aaron Pogue, like fat Aaron Pogue, except like before he even got to Cleveland State because he was just so raw. And there's just like there's there's probably something there, but he needs to get time. And now a good the only thing that's there is six foot nine two sixty. That's the only thing that's there. And you know, hopefully they can harness something. I mean, that's the hopefully. Hopefully, now there now there are five returning Vikings who really like really four who played an actual who played like a meaningful role in the two starting guards who I sometimes call Dumb and Dumber: Charlie Lee and Trey Lewis. Anton Grady and Marlon Mason, along with Demonte Flanagan. What do you think? Of, what do you think of these guys? Well, Mason, you know, I'm going to start with Mason. Full of potential, and you know, just hasn't lived up to what his athleticism nor his skill set has. Um, Anton, he has the capability of being the Horizon League Player of the Year, yeah. but without any help, you know, at center. It's just not going to happen. I mean, he's not a he's not a center. No, I think so, the ESPN recruiting profile lists him as a small forward, which even in even in like a mid major, okay, you can get away with playing him at the four. Like Jonathan Bullock played the four, and he was like six five, so you can get away with that with Grady. But he's not a big guy who can just pound down low with like the Alec Browns of the world. Granted, he's gone now, so he won't be an issue. But the like and the like. I agree. And then you got the guards, Lewis and Lee, and I, I think what you're basically trying to say about Dumb and Dumber is that they're inconsistent. I mean, one day they can score 30, the next day they can score four, and that's not how you win a championship. No, I mean, the, the thing is, when you have a streaky shooter, you're going to have games where he goes 10 of 15 and games where he goes 5 of 15. And the problem is, a good player who is who understands the game and doesn't need his shots, in, qu- in air quotes there, you can like you can um, see that he will go ten of fifteen in the good game, but then instead of going five of fifteen, he'll go two of six or something instead of trying to force up shots because those are like his shots. You, you know, upon a little bit of study and examination, I'm seeing a big year out of Charlie Lee because I I think he has that maturity and I think he has a lot of leadership ability in him. Um. So I think we'll be fine at that position. I want, honestly, um, I want Charlie Lee at the two, though. I want Charlie Lee at the two guard on offense. On defense, he has to guard the one because he's 5'9". He's short. But last season, Charlie Lee made 84 field goals, 42 threes, 42 twos. He was 42 of 97 from three, which is 43% of them. He was 42 of 116 from inside from two-point land. That's 36%. And he was great at the free throw line, but... He has to realize he's 5'9". He's short. He can try and slash all he wants, but he doesn't have the height to be consistent at scoring inside. But he does distribute. He does get his assist, and, you know, there's something to be said about that. But, you know, when it all comes said and done, I mean, if they're playing a three-guard set, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if Yates was, you know, the man to, you know, kind of facilitate the offense. Yeah, it's like how – um, it's like how – um. Back when he back when um Waters had DeAndre Brown, Jeremy Montgomery, and Trey Harmon, he realized that he could that he like um was able to change up who was at the point depending on who was shooting well and who would be able to distribute better. Uh, so where are we at here? Um, your expectations for uh for the season uh is it kind of a like the way I describe it is like a casino. Like, you could either win big or you could lose big. That's the way I'm looking at it. I yeah, I could see that too. But I think that's for a lot of teams in the league as well. I think that um, I'm now I'm not a fan of the schedule. I think I am I am really disappointed in the schedule that Gary Waters put together in terms of yes, he always gets like the one or two like marquee type games like the Kentucky's this year. It's Louisville or the Ohio State's in some years and stuff, but. This year, he also has D2 Malone, D2 yeah. Tiffin, NAIA school from from not where from not far where I'm at from where I'm at right now, Mount Vernon Nazarene. Who's 
they always everyone always complains that no fans show up to these games. Who's going to want to show up to see Cleveland State win by 600 points over Mount Vernon Nazarene? This is a joke. Like, what's the point of that? It's not going to help your RPI. It's not going to do anything for you as a team. Why waste your time? Like, why waste your time scheduling a game like that? Especially three of them. I can understand one, like as an exhibition or something, but three of them. Uh, well, I suppose in their defense, they do have a young team that needs to get some floor time, and maybe that's the rationale. Still, you play like you can play like the other teams, like the mid majors or the low majors. Like you can see, um, let me pull up the schedule here. You can play the teams like they're playing Jacksonville State, Savannah State, Western Illinois, Eastern Illinois. Like they, You can play those schools, which is what they usually play. But three games against clearly inferior competition is just... They might as well, they might as well come down to Granville and play Denison. And they're going to have a hard enough time, you know, getting relevance with the return of LeBron, you know. Oh, for sure. And a lot of those games are actually scheduled when the Cavs are playing. So, I mean, it's it's going to be like a ghost town at the Wallstein Center, unfortunately. Even more so than usual. But, but let's go back to you, – you kind of hit on it. The Horizon League, you know, it's a real toss of the dice. I mean, nobody really knows what's going to happen. Alec Brown leaving Green Bay, I mean, they obviously have the player of the year and – Kiefer Sykes. Coming back. But who knows? I mean, a- actually, when I was looking at it, and if you had to put a gun to my head, I'm going to say Wright State's going to win the conference well, just because I think they're so well coached. See, I could see that. But, I mean, it's I mean, like last year, Milwaukee won the tournament and ended up going to the dance. I think this year I could see um, I could see Detroit being the dark horse with Jawan Howard Jr. But then I could also see – I mean, I could, I could see one of really five or six teams – Competing. At the thing about Detroit, though, they're just so undisciplined. You know, it's just they have a lot of talent a lot of times, and it's just like it just gets thrown away by bad coaching. I agree with that. I mean, I don't think I don't think that even um I don't think Ray McCallum even was able to um I think he wasn't able to like get the most out of his son. Is the I coach's agree. name? Is the coach's name right too? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, Ray Jr. Ray, Ray Jr. That's what I thought. I was like, is there a different name? But yeah, I, I think Detroit. I think Detroit, though. I think Juwan Howard Jr. I think he's. I mean, I saw him play last year. He is. He's good, and I think that he could. I mean, it depends on how the standings go. If Detroit wins the league, then Juwan Howard Jr. is going to be Player of the Year. It really is. What player steps up and leads the, and leads his team to the title, to the regular season title? Simple as well, that. You know, and hopefully Grady, you know, I think he was kind of hobbled last year after that knee surgery, and, you know, hopefully he stays healthy and that knee is strong, and, you know, it could happen, but there's a lot of what-ifs. I mean, there's too many what-ifs for my liking this year. Oh, yeah, from the Vikings, I mean, there are just so many, especially in terms of the big men. Gary Waters is saying he has a lot of big man depth. No, he doesn't. He doesn't have good depth. It's like I could. It's like I could get like six, six, nine guys who have zero athletic ability and just like put them on my bench. That's depth inside, but it doesn't mean that it's depth I want to get to. I want to have to use. Well, I think another another one. You know that they're kind of banking on. I mean, you need some production out of them is is Flanagan, but you know he saw action last year and. It wasn't, you know, the prettiest thing, but he could have he could make a step forward. I mean, as a sophomore, I'm hoping he does. Actually, um, I saw him play when um he was in. It would have been seventh and eighth grade that he would have been in, because I think he's actually um my year, um and yeah, he would be because he's a sophomore now. Yeah, he's my year, and I remember it was like in middle school he played, and he was he was over at Richmond Heights before going to um, I think it was VASJ is where he went to high school. And what happened was he was just so much better. He was six four, huge, could dunk, and I went and, and I went to Hawkins School, which is we're not we're not athletically talented. We're not known for our athletics. And in middle school, it it was painful. It was it was embarrassing to watch to watch them just like run all over us. But 
he was very good. He was really talented. Yeah, and hopefully, you know, his athleticism didn't peak too early, I guess. that You know what I mean? 6'4 at 7th grade, you know, and he might have became complacent, you know, being so dominating. That That's a concern. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I think, th- but I think that he is realizing, especially last season, that he has to work harder. Because, yes, he yes he appeared in twenty games, but he played five minutes a game. It's not like he was. It's not like he. It's not like he got a lot of playing time. Like because like he may have worked hard, but it's not, he wasn't ready for more playing time. Well, Waters basically said that you know he wanted to throw him into the fire just to show him what that level of competition was like, and hopefully he learned something from that. Hopefully, because he'll because he may be the guy if um if Gary Waters wants to go with um with Lee and Lewis and then Mason's kind of like a swing and then f- inserts Flanagan in there, Flanagan Demonte could probably take the five on defense even if he's undersized a little bit. He prob I think he has more strength in terms of like just like he's a bulkier guy than Anton Grady down low that he might be able to take some pressure off of Grady on defense. So I guess we'll uh, we'll kind of what's your call on the league? Who who's going to win the league in the uh, comp, in the regular season, and who's going to take the tournament? What what's your call? That's a tough one. See, I I'm going to go with Green Bay because I really think Kiefer Sykes is that good. I mean, he was that good last year that he wouldn't that he won Player of the Year, and he's back, and he's going to probably be even better. I mean, if if he takes a jump, even half the jump that like a guy like Norris Cole. T- took from junior to senior year at Cleveland State years a couple years back. He'll be very good and he'll be pretty much unstoppable. Well, it's know. it's funny that you mentioned Cole because that's actually a reason that I'm not. I don't foresee Green Bay winning, and this isn't going to be a popular viewpoint that I'm putting out there. But I think it was about him his senior year more than about the team. Because you could, when there was when, no talent uh, on that team, though there was not there was not enough talent for him. He had to carry that team. Well, the next year when DeAndre Brown was back, it was basically the same cast of characters, and that team was a lot better. I mean, albeit a year older. Yes, that's why I think, and I think a lot of guys stepped up because they kind of saw Norris Cole be so great, and they kind of stepped up, and they kind of stepped no, up. I, I disagree with that, though. I think they were standing around. That was the problem is that, you know what I mean, oh, it's going to be one against five. And I'm not taking anything against him. You know, he's trying to get drafted. Yeah. You see what I'm, where I'm getting at? Yeah, and the thing is, like, I still think that the greatest the greatest singular performance that I have ever seen on a basketball court was Norris Cole against Youngstown State. 40 points, 21 rebounds, nine assists, five steals. It was just amazing. And the thing is, Cleveland State, the Vikings still only won by – um. Ten points that game. I, they think they ever, I don't even think they won by ten. They might only won by six. I mean, they actually needed that performance that day. Exactly. I, that's why, and that's the one. That's the one performance that I point to because Norris Cole realized he needed to step up. He needed to be this. He needed to be the guy, and he was the guy a lot of times. And that's why he ended up averaging twenty points a game. And he was really he was solid his senior year. Oh, no doubt about it. So um, you're going. I'm going with Wright State. I I really believe in that coach down there. I don't know how they keep on getting these coaches. It's one after another that they seem to produce. I know Billy Donovan. It's his first job too, so it's like nobody else seemed to really see that he was um that he was worthy of a head coaching job. But Wright State did, and now the um Raiders are it's paying off for them. Um and um, your predictions on basically the individuals. See, I think um. It's so tough because the first team could be filled with, with I, I don't think it's that big of a list, but I think that pretty much anyone who would be competing for the All Horizon first team is also going to be on that list for the Horizon League Player of the Year, depending on where their team finishes. I think it really depends. I think um, since Green Bay, I think is going to win the regular season title. I think Kiefer Sykes is going to win the Player of the Year, but then. I'm not sure about who's going to be on the All Horizon team. I'm sure there's going to be at least a Cleveland State guy on there, but is it going to be Trey Lewis? Is it going to be Anton Grady? I don't know. I think I would I would like think Trey Lewis is actually a safer bet than Grady because of injuries, but I'm not sure. I think I think Juwan Howard Jr. will also make it. Alec Peters from Valpo, if he can take a step up, might be good. 
And then if you're looking for a dark horse, I'm wondering what Krishan Hopkins might have at um, Wright State. I don't know about I, – I think he might end up – like he, like his numbers don't look that great, but if Wright State does well, he's going to be the name from that team because he transferred from Butler, and everyone remembers him from a few years back with um, the well, Bulldogs. Not only do I remember him, you know, he showed that talent. You know, he, he's a big – He's like six foot five, six foot six, that he can jump and he can finish, you know, around the hoop. Uh, you know, that's a good call. I like the hot. So, no, I mean, he, I mean, he can jump, but he's only listed at six one, which is actually really surprising. Maybe, they, maybe, they, maybe they shrunk him a little bit. I thought he was listed at six foot four in, at Butler, but I don't know. I mean, I mean, it's been. I mean, a let's be week. honest. Jonathan Bullock was listed at six five. Does anyone really think Jonathan Bullock was six feet five inches tall? Well, you said Charlie Lee was five foot nine, and I almost fell out of my chair. He's about five five. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's like he's short. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I think we had a good show, and uh, I mean, I, oh, I think that I think there might be a couple more. I think there's a couple more things, though. Don't want to forget. Um, have you seen the new? Have you seen the tournament format for this season yet? I have I'm not. That up with you. So the new tournament format, because of the new um league deal with ESPN. There are nine teams in the Horizon League. The top eight make the tournament. So the bottom team misses out, and what happens is the first four seeds all get a buy, and the top two seeds actually get a double buy. So it's a little bit different. Well, could it be because Milwaukee's actually not allowed to participate this year? Is that the reasoning? Milwaukee's not allowed to participate? Yes, they were banned because they didn't make the grades. Oh, I didn't realize, but I don't think that's I don't think that's the thing because I think if it's the APR stuff, um, what it is, it's like UConn a few years ago. They can still compete in the postseason tournament there, I believe. They just, cannot. Uh, oh, they can compete in the Horizon League tournament. Yep. I thought they could compete in the Horizon League tournament, but if they won it, then it would go to the team that lost the championship game. I, I from what I that's what I thought. That is not what I read. I, I think it's maybe the NCAA actually got even harsher. Maybe that. Yeah. That could be because also I think UConn was a special thing because they were like trying to show that their grades got better and stuff, and they only missed for one year. I mean, it depends, but that's interesting because they made the dance last year. So I guess that I guess that makes it a one and eight shot then for the Vikings of making the tournament. Yeah, and yeah, Jeter. I mean, he's proven to that he can make something out of nothing, kind of. So it's true, and I mean, it it really it's it's what coaches can really coach in the tournament. More so than one than who can coach in the regular season, because you look. I mean, Butler. Yes, they were amazing for their last few years in the Horizon League, and with Brad Stevens. But they didn't win the tournament every year. They lost to Cleveland State the one year. They lost to Wright State another year. So I mean, it's it depends if you can really just like pull the one upset when it counts. You can. It's it's um, about getting hot at the right time, and Cleveland State keeps on peaking too early, and it keeps on biting them right in the ass. Way too early. It's like it was. A, it was a couple years ago. What they were. They were. Um. They were almost ranked. They were up in the. Um. They were getting votes in the polls because they were like, twelve and one or something, early on. There has been, you know, to, to their defense though, there has been some bad luck with, you know, key injuries. It seems like what could go wrong has gone wrong, and one of these years maybe it's going to work out for them. I mean, this year we're going to know a lot more in three weeks from now what this team's going to be like. Once we see if Zalo can play, once we see, you know, what the depth of those guards are going to bring. Yeah, and if people have, if people have progressed or regressed in the off season, what they look like. I mean, it looks like Anton Grady, from what I've seen, he looks like he's a little bit, he's a little bit bigger than he was, but he's still, he's, he's still not a big guy. Well, it's almost unfair what they're asking him to do. Oh yeah, I mean, I always, I mean, I, I thought it was, I thought he was, he had to do a tough job when he was a freshman, even coming in as a fruit, as a true freshman, having to play, having to play like serious minutes at the center position in place of Aaron Pogue, who was much bulkier than Grady is, and so I mean, I, and I thought he did a, did a really nice job there, and I, and I think that if he can, if he can get away from that, like five, that center position, he'll be able to flourish this season. It just depends. Will Waters need to go to him there out of necessity? Yeah, and I think all of Viking Nation hopes that's not the case. Oh, yeah, for sure. And the thing is, though, I think, I mean, I, I do like the fact that the first game is going to be a win. It's going to be a, it's going to be a, it's going to be a nice home opener on November 10th against Malone, D2. That'll be easy enough to win. 
But then it's like, I think, I mean, Iona's always a tough mid-major if you look at the schedule here. And Iona's going to be a tough one. I think that that's going to really be, it's a good it's a good mix in those first two games because it's going to be, it's going to give the guys time to really see what game action is like and to understand what you can get away with in a game that you can't, that you can also get away with in practice, but like what you can't get away with in a game more so than anything else. And then you go to Iona, who is really going to be a, good competition, and it's a road game, and they're kind of going to see what can an atmosphere really be like at the college level. Yeah, and there's a lot of inexperience. I mean, there's experience, but then there's a lot of inexperience when you go five. and I mean, from Yates on down, you know what I mean? These guys haven't really been battle-tested yet. Yeah, and they haven't played together. That was what, that was, what was so amazing um, those few years, like um, – even the, the, the if you look the Jonathan Bullock Cedric Jackson years to the Norris Cole and then that De, and then DeAndre Brown senior year, the nucleus was usually yes a player would leave or graduate and things but it was usually like there were like three play, like three players and a couple bench guys three stars and a couple bench guys who would return and be able to pick up the slack. This year there isn't that. There's, I mean they lost so many guys who were. Well, I, I can tell you where they're at. One's one's Junior Lumbumba. He's in the Big East. One's Brent Forbes, he's in the Big Ten. And the other's at Mercer that just went to the NCAA tournament last year. Yeah, he is. And um, Ike Nwamu had a nice dunk on Ted Spin a couple weeks ago. And I was like, oh, could have been. Because it's disappointing with the transfers and stuff, but it's also disappointing the guys who graduated. Like, Sebastian Douglas is always a guy you root for. With all of his injuries and things. Well, he was a Gary Waters-type player. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? That If you were going to define him, you're going to say... That's Gary Waters basketball, and like, yes, a hard him, worker. Yeah, him and Harris are going to be just extremely missed, and replacing those three, Forbes, Douglas, and Harris. I mean, that's some. Um, that's a task. Exactly. Yeah, and I mean, then you lose. I mean, yes, you lost some guys like ID. I mean, ID last year he was a junior. So I thought, oh, maybe he's like maybe next year he'll be a little better. But he's gone now. He was six ten. Even if you even if he couldn't do much, when you're six ten, you get you get some help. You get the, that that height helps you. And I think Forbes though, by the end of the season, he really was struggling. There were times where his when he, where he just couldn't find his shot, and it really and it really took a toll on the team. I don't know what he's thinking going to Michigan State. I think. I mean, it's it's because of hardship and stuff with like his family and things, which is understandable. It's not for on court reasons. But then again, let's be honest here. If you're Cleveland State, who's in the Horizon League, no offense to them, no offense to Coach Waters, and you can go and play at Michigan State for two years on scholarship, and you're from Michigan and your family's there, why wouldn't you? I mean, Michigan State is like a, it's it's a really great program with an amazing coach. Well, we're going to touch on that with Paul Oren a little bit because he had a little thing in his column about Waters going over that in the conference, and I'm going to add that into our little discussion because uh, Waters was pretty did, – did you watch that by chance? I did. I, I tried to, but the volume was so soft. I couldn't hear the press conference. Yeah, I had to put, I had to put, uh, I had to put headphones in it. But yeah, Waters was – Waters was unbelievably open about it, and uh, even, like, I thought that when I first saw it, and Oren actually makes a mention of that in his column, like, he really opened up about it, and I want to see what Paul has to say about it before I, you know, give too much away. But Yeah, for sure. It was an interesting exchange. I'm sure, because it's like you're talking about a player who just was like, see ya. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, and I mean it's it's kind of understandable though. I mean like it is it's not like he was just it's not like with Nuamu or even Lamamba who just like I mean Nuamu I think just like took a sidestep to go to Mercer because he thought the program would fit him better. And then Lamamba he went to Providence which yes they're in the Big East but are they in the AAC actually now? Is it the are, are they in the American now? Um whichever one it is, not important. Um I mean, I don't think I think he just got frustrated, but it wasn't his fault. He did, it wasn't his fault he was injured. But at the same time, I, I mean, I don't understand why he ended up transferring. Well, I've heard some things, and you know, I don't think that's on Cleveland State. 
I mean, I, I don't know exactly what happened, but it seemed like everyone was talking. He was the most prized recruit outside of, like, Ant it was like him and Anton Grady were the best two recruits that Waters has gotten in his time at Cleveland State. And one of them leaves after one year? That doesn't Well, that's the shame of it all because two, year, two years ago, I was saying this was a Sweet 16 team that actually could even make a run farther, and now we're kind of left all just questioning, are they going to win a weekend Horizon League? Yeah, it's true. I mean, it's like it's like realistically, you could see them winning the league. But you could also see them just like trudging through like a middling, if not worse, finish. You could well, totally... honestly, they could win the league and be a 16 seed as bad as the league is. That's true too. That's true too. It's like they, it's like I, it's like looking at the schedule and stuff. Yeah, they play at Louisville. Yeah, they play at Virginia. Yeah, they play at VCU. Those three teams are the ranked teams in the non-conference schedule. I don't. I don't see him coming within twenty points of any of them. There's. They. They just. I. I think they're going to be good in terms of the level of competition in the conference, but I don't see them being able to have enough to be able to like dethrone one of the top teams. I think basically the thesis is that we both believe that they're going to take a step back, but the Horizon League as a whole is going to take a step back as well. Yes. Yes, and I think, and that's why I think the Vikings. That's why I think the league is more even too. That's the other thing. It's not. It's not just that like the league is worse. It's that it's that there's just there's no team that has separated itself. There were years where Butler was amazing, and the rest of the league was actually pretty good, alongside other years where Butler was amazing and the league sucked. Yeah, even even last year the league was pretty solid, but uh, I thought. This year it seemed like a lot of graduations and just yeah a lot of graduations and a lot of just like um just a lot of teams like in rebuilding years mhm mm cleveland state included all right well uh, we'll be back at it next week are we going to shoot for wednesday is that what this is looking like possibly i will i will let everyone know with this with um my schedule depending on everything it should be we're hoping to do this on wednesday evenings every week but it just it all depends um, on my schedule, because that's what happens when you're in college and you're a college student. Sometimes other things come up, and you can't really stop them when they're academic and when they're academic and work related and things like that. Wait till you have kids; you're gonna really be in for it. No, not not yet, not yet, not yet. I don't want to think about that. I can't. I can't even think about. I can't even think like past next week. Not not not. Don't want to think that far ahead. That's for sure. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next week sometime.